Blake Masters will be the next senator of the great state of Arizona. And I'm sick and tired of these plebs on Twitter saying, Oh, well, Masters can't win because he can't do it. All that stuff. I'm sick and tired of all this nonsense that Masters can't win because Arizona's a neocon state and all this garbage and the fact that somehow helping families will hurt him. Guys, I am sick and tired of this. I have to do some debunking. You know, I don't like to do debunking a lot, but this nonsense being pushed by the populist ink people on Twitter, you know, the same people that said Nancy Mace will be a great Republican in the great state of South Carolina. Those are the same people we're talking about. You know, Nancy Mace, not the, not particularly a good a Republican, but you get the point that these same people that push the shittiest candidates are saying Bronovich can win, but Masters can't. And I'm going to debunk that today. I have a lot of polling data. I have a lot of data here to prove a point because there's a lot of narratives being thrown around about Masters. And I'm going to say this right out of the way. Masters policies are not only popular in Arizona. Yeah, they're fairly popular in the great state of Arizona. So we're going to have some uh, little bit of debunking. So let's get right into it. Blake Masters is a Chad. He looks like a Chad. His policies are just full of Chadness. He's a national conservative. That's what he is. He's a national conservative, not a, oh, well, you see, um, tax cuts for corporations is the only thing. Which, by the way, tax cuts are good. Not denying that, but making that your entire platform that's not going to make you win. But with Masters, he actually talks about the issue, you know, reduce immigration, you know, fight for workers, all this stuff. And by the way, not just illegal immigration. No, no, no. Reduce legal immigration with a mandatory E-Verify. All of that. That's a good thing, which I'm going to show you that stuff is popular. He also is against endless wars. He has a strong bill of rights part, education, all of that. So all of this is popular. This nonsense that, oh, well, in Arizona, it voted for McCain by 12 points. And that must mean it's a neocon. Say, all oh, that garbage. I'm here to debunk that. So Masters, we know, is a national conservative. He's a giga chad, all that. So <clears throat> let's go step by step on debunking Arizona's a neocon. Say, garbage. Let's just take a look at 2020, which we know, not going to get into it, but, you know... <laughs> Not going to say the word, but you know what I'm saying, that maybe we should, like, question this a little bit. Anyways, so, as you can see, Trump lost, you know, the state of Arizona by around 11,000 votes, or, like, 0.3 percentage points. A big part of the reason that he lost Arizona was he didn't do particularly swell in Maricopa, unusual turnout on Pima, and a little bit worse in places like Mahove and Yavapai. Yavapi? Yavapi. You know what I you know what I'm saying. So that's the reason that Trump did a little bit worse, but I'm gonna get into that a little bit. However, the establishment candidate in Martha McSally did significantly worse. Lost by around two and a half percentage points. You heard that right. She was the establishment candidate, you know, the neocon S candidate. She lost by two and a half points to Mark Kelly. Did a little bit worse in Maricopa, did worse in Vape, did worse in Lopez, did worse in Mahove. This garbage of Arizona's a neocon state. Bull. McSally was the establishment candidate, and she did significantly worse than Trump, who is the more populist candidate. Now, you get people saying, oh, well, you see here... McCain and Mitt Romney won the state of Arizona by 10 percentage points in 2000, you know, all that garbage. Well, guess what? Look who he ran against. He ran a guy against a guy that you no way you could possibly paint him as a moderate. There's no way, Obama. You just couldn't paint him as a moderate. And that's why he got slapped here twice. But with Clinton, you know, Hillary Clinton, we all know Bill Clinton, uh, not Hill, no, Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden are not moderates. Let's get that out of the way. But you're able to paint them more moderate than you are with Obama. While with Trump, it's kind of easy to make it seem like you're more moderate than him, which that's kind of a bullshit thing. But, you know, that's just Trump. 
And we saw this in 2020, Trump did worse in, than 2016. In 2016, Trump did worse than Rodney. But he ran against a campaign that was, you know, trying to pretend to be moderate. You know, Hillary Clinton, oh, I'm a moderate. All that garbage. Uh, we're going to continue the, the Obama legacy and we're going to, you know, fight for America. All that garbage from Hillary Clinton. And Joe Biden, you know, he pretended to be like working Joe and all that garbage. They ran as more moderate candidates, but we all know they're not moderates. And we all see what's happening in the country. People are waking up to the fact that, okay, the, the Democrats are not moderates. That, that's garbage. We finally are seeing people wake up to the nonsense that the Democrats are, you know, all this garbage, that they're a moderate. They're not. Their policies are hurting millions of innocent working Americans. And people are finally seeing it. And I do believe Arizona will go by a large margin, the Republicans in 2024. Now, in 2022 also. Now, people are going to say, well, Doug Ducey won by like 13 in 2018. Look at who he ran against. He ran against a Bernie bro. If Trump ran against Bernie Sanders in 2020, he would want Arizona by a larger margin than McCain won it by in 2008. So stop with this garbage. The reason that Republicans... You know, statewide level do significantly better because they always ran against Bernie bros or, you know, Obama shills. All that. Obama was never liked in Arizona. Biden is was somewhat liked here. Also, the fact that we had COVID, which kind of inflated the results a little bit. Because remember, there's a huge boomer population in this state. So that's all of that. We get the point that Arizona, even in 2020, there's a lot of ifs that the state's even a neocon state. I would say it's like a center-right state, not an establishment state. No, 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 that's not that's not a fair comparison. It's more of a center-right, more, I guess, quote-unquote, moderate state. But that's kind of disingenuous when you look at it because, you know, this poll done by Richard Barris a couple, you know, last, I think, October, um, you know, more people are saying that immigration in America, you know, the government policy, it's about right. Under Trump, the government policy was about right. And when you include the too weak, that's the majority of people thought, you know, it was about right or even just a bit too weak. This is from Arizona, by the way. This is not a na nationwide poll or anything like that. This is from Arizona. And you go down here, 47% of people supported the wall. And 35% opposed it. So 13% more people supported the wall in Arizona, a border state, than they did oppose it. And these are Trump policies. You notice in a trend here that, you know, Trumpian-like policies, they're actually kind of popular in the great state of Arizona. So we got that all the way. Now, let's talk about the primary for a little bit. Because, again, there's more people saying, well, masters can't, you know... Get above 10% in the primary, which is nonsense because the one poll with an actual sample size that's recent has masters of 14%. Now, there's two other polls I want to talk about. The Ohio Predictive Insights. You notice this 12% for this Michael McGuire guy? Guys, this poll is complete horseshit. Go look inside of it. They wore the questions like, do you support... Uh, a former head of the, I think, Arizona National Guard, I think it was, that McGuire was? Or do you support Blake Masters, a businessman? That's why I'm saying this garbage that Masters is not doing well in the polls, they're inflated by garbage polling questions, by Ohio Predictive Insights. And even then, it's showing Masters is going up, while Baranovich is stuck at 27%. So, in the, even the primary polls are showing... Masters is picking up steam very slowly. Again, we got months upon months upon months until the primary. So calm down about, well, he's not polling high enough yet. We have plenty of time. Now, here's the polling. As you can tell, former head of the Arizona National Guard. Businessman, businessman, attorney general, which I know this is from a couple months ago. But again, look at this. I mean, who, who do you think a big chunk of the people are going to... Say, the former head of the National Guard or the Attorney General. They're going to favor these two overwhelmingly. That's why I'm saying, yeah, this is a bit um, inflated. So, calm down, people. A lot of this Ohio predictive insight nonsense about McGuire. 
it's being inflated by a lot of this. And we see this in the other polls. I mean, the rest of the polls, he's like, what, 2%? Yeah, something tells me that Masters will be the nominee. I have a good feeling that a big chunk of this McGuire vote will go to Masters. When you look at it, McGuire is doing best in the rural and Pima parts of the state. Those are two parts of the state where, you know, Masters are going to do pretty well in. So that's just me. That's just what's happening. Plus, it's 18 to 20, 54 group. That's just ridiculous. It's the only reason, again, that he's that high is because of, you know, oh, well, you see, he's a National Guard person. So that's that. Masters will get the nomination. So that already you could just debunk, throw away. Now, there's one more thing people are wanting to talk about. Well, what about the abortion ban? The abortion ban? All that nonsense that, oh, well, abortion is unpopular in America. Well, actually it is, but people are saying, it's actually very popular. We cannot ban abortion. It's over for us. Look at this poll. Let's just look at this poll right here. You know, let's just look at, um, let's look by party. This is a nationwide poll. Notice anything about abortion. After a heartbeat is detected, 47% of Americans oppose it. When a heartbeat is detected, opposes abortion. After doctors determine a baby can feel pain, 54%. During the final three months of pregnancy, 67%. Any time of the pregnancy, 49%. Look at the people that support it. It's basically none. This is why I'm telling people that this abortion ban nonsense is not going to hurt masters in Arizona. In fact, if it's overturned, that Roe Ro versus Wade is overturned, this would help Republicans. So the abortion argument, nonsense. The primary nonsense that, oh, well, he can't pull high enough. I debunked that. And the fact that it's a neocon state, I'm going to debunk that one more. Look at this. So Trump won the conservative vote by 76%, which we all know exit polls are garbage at times. But again, yeah, he won them by, let's say, 76%. With 42% of the electorate. Remember that number. Well, let's go to 2012. In 2012, conservatives were 40% of the electorate. Romney won them by 65. Trump did better with the conservative vote than Romney did. The issue was, well, no, whoops, that's the wrong one. 72%, that makes more sense. But that's 38% of the electorate. Trump did better with the conservative vote than Romney did. With the higher percent of the electorate, what happened, the moderate vote fell down a little bit for Republicans. It went from 42% to, I believe, 36%. And they went from losing it by 15 to losing it by like 35, which I guarantee you, this was overinflated by COVID, this drop off in the moderate vote. That's the biggest reason that there's a huge drop off in the moderate vote. For the Republicans, the fact that boomer moderates, you know, in the suburbs, in the rural part of the state, they're terrified of COVID for some obvious reasons. We even see this in age. You go up to age a little bit. You know, Romney won them by 34. He won them by 34, the boomer vote, which ignore 2008. The 2008 exit polls, they're not particularly good. But let's go up to age. Let's just go up to age right here. 65 and over, Trump won them by one. This is why that Trump lost the state or did worse here. The boomer vote was terrified of COVID. But you notice the younger vote, Obama won them by 34. Trump lost them by only 31. A three point, oh, three point shift a couple of years. Noticing a trend here. The younger votes are starting to get more and more Republican as time goes on. This is what I'm saying, folks. COVID inflated a lot of this garbage with Trump struggling in Arizona, Georgia to an extent, especially Texas. If it wasn't for COVID, Trump would have absolutely wiped out Biden in the state. This is just exit poll data, which I know is not the best, but we see a very intriguing trend with this. So if it wasn't for COVID, Trump would have gotten very close to the moderate vote. And reminder, the conservative vote has gotten bigger in Arizona for Republicans with Trump. It's gotten more conservative, the state. So none of this garbage that's a moderate state. 
it's not even a moderate state. It's like a right-leaning state. Center-right, the right-leaning state. So this is what I'm saying. Republicans and Blake Masters are going to win Arizona by a substantial margin in 2022. You just got to win back some of that moderate vote, which you're already doing with gas prices. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, I hope you did it, by the way. Smash the like button down below. Subscribe. Share with your friends. Hit that little bell. And yes, again, this is more of a rant type of a of a video because I'm getting sick of this nonsense that Arizona's gone for Republicans. I can't win it. It's turning more conservative as time goes on. We even see this right here. 38% to 42% conservative. I hope you guys did enjoy. Smash the like button down below. Subscribe. Share with your friends. Hit the little bell. And yes. Thank you guys for watching. Reminder that the, this is a rant video. So calm down. Thank you guys for watching.